So this is part three of our video on how to analyze or how to interpret your blood tests, especially through our big uh, profile through Balance My Hormones. And we're here with Dr. George Triatos, and we're gonna review the final bit, including the hormones, what to look at if you're on treatment, if you're off treatment, after this, so keep watching. Hi, I'm Mike, the founder of Balance My Hormones, where we support men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please like or subscribe and leave comments to get future content. We're here today with Dr. George Triatos. We're reviewing part three video of how to interpret blood tests. Uh, right now we're on the most exciting part, the part everyone likes to get to, is the hormone section of our comprehensive blood tests through Balance by Hormones, which you can find on our website. So George, good to have you back, and we are now on the final stage. So this particular um, man has, uh, is on TRT. He got his first six month uh, blood test. Um, we, we see FSH and LH, we have this on the blood test. It, we use it for patients who are looking to get on the TRT. So obviously when you're looking to get on TRT, the LH and the FSH are, are, are what? No, in primary they are uh, mid, mid, mid line, um, in the middle or super elevated, trying to compensate the lack of testosterone in the in, uh, testicular failure, like in Klein and Fertile, for instance. But in secondary, it's dead, so the brain doesn't give the you signal. Have a very, very low amount. Very low, and along with all sorts of testosterone. We shouldn't measure them after we introduce testosterone because they switch off. Yes. That's all. So, so some people will, will panic, but we have seen some who. They Even though off. when you introduce HEG, it's still it's off. It's still off. That's, that's so the way, reason why we have it on, on our test, sometimes we've seen, I don't say miracles, but there are some people, for whatever reason, they still, still have an LH the, the FH. HPDA is still active. Yeah. But after a while, there'll be suppression no matter what. But it also helps tell if they're actually taking their medication or not. So there's no really extra cost to have yes. those two items on there. So, so we leave them on. What we tell them is if it's less than or if it's low, it would be abnormal if it weren't low. If it wasn't in red, it would be abnormal if it wasn't. If you're on you TRT. Can still so, you can still see if testosterone is legitimate and works. Well, that, that's the other reason, right? So we keep it on there. So, okay, here's, here's a part. The estradiol level of 169 and the range is four, 41 to 159 and the testosterone level is 40.6. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with those two. So what I've noticed on the testosterone and the free testosterone side is what is the frequency of dosing and when do they do the blood test in relation yes. the to- The timing is crucial because all it matters are the trough levels. Yeah. They need to be uh, adequate, the, the trough levels. Y it doesn't matter, the spike will go downhill afterwards. Yeah. Everything will spike, even a small dose will spike. The day and of the dose, the day of your dose before you inject. The day of the dose because, yeah, or oh, right, right, right before, I'm it sorry. It gets confusing, yeah. yeah the day, you want it as close to the point where yes, you're going to, to inject. Yes, to feel good already. Yeah. Okay, you're going to feel super right after, and until the time and it clears your system, right before the next shot to feel good. So this is a trough. Okay. And the trough should be at least mid-range, at least mid-range. Okay, so this particular... Uh, level is 40.6, um, but we don't know if this was on the true trough. We don't know if it was a day you before. You should ask the patient, cooperate with him, when was the particular time, and with creams, because creams are so fast acting, you need to, to evaluate very properly the time. The time, you know? and it's harder, to, it's harder to meet that window, isn't it? Because you've got between because 12. Because the esters are slow, much slower. There's no ester in the creams. I know, yeah, yeah. I know, but with the injectable esters, they can be slower. And they're slower, and they're, it's better to, to estimate this. Okay, so for this patient, uh, we obviously we, we don't know because it was someone who posted it online, and obviously during uh, the follow up with, with the doctor, they'll be able to um, to determine the timing of the testosterone. So now, a higher sodal doesn't always reflect to problems in the nipple because it's the ratio of testosterone to estradiol. Right, so if, the, if there's 40.6 nanomolars per liter of testosterone total. So a higher testosterone more likely to give a higher estradiol. Okay, and same with the free. So the free testosterone calculated is one or one, 1.010. Uh, SHBG, uh, no, free testosterone relates to SHBG. SHBG, SHBG is moderate. Sometimes you don't have SHBG, 
but you have the free testosterone, you can realize how much is the CHBG. Yeah. So it's 33, the SHBG on this it's one. It's kind of low, kind of low. M moderate, would you say in, in the middle, because the range is... Up to 80. 18 to 54. 54, on uh, this because one. In, in my country, they give it up to 78. Okay. So, um, I've seen a CHBG of 110, you know. Oh, well, so a total so testosterone of 900 and zero libido. 900 <laughs> on... If you go to endocrinology with this, go away. 900 nanograms per deciliter you're referring yeah, to, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what would you do, uh, assuming this is, the, this is the person's trough at 40.6, would you have them reduce the dose, or leave it alone? Do Either reduce the dose slightly or postpone the, do the next dose. Yeah, to add another day between... Yes, so the frequency should be... But if uh, uh, changed. But if this weren't the, if this wasn't the trough level, oh, then we, we should uh, retest. Retest, yes, okay. absolutely. All right. The other bits on here are prolactin. It's uh, three o eight. High level is three two four. It's all right. And DHEA sulfate is one point six eight. Uh, and this particular must be age adjusted, 1.2 to 8.9, but I've also seen as high as 12. We can increase DHEA to feel better. So 1.68, so about 10 Double dose of 25 milligrams. Or 10 milligrams every day? 25. Oh, 25 that high? Double, 50. Oh, you do 50? AM, PM. Okay. You split the dose. I, I tend to just do 10 milligrams and my levels- Just 10? And my levels are adequate. It means your uh, yeah, adrenals re uh, react a lot good. Okay, you know? well that's good then. And cortisol, again, I don't know the time it, uh, it didn't include cortisol this. Cortisol is better to be fast at a.m. A.m., so spikes. this is 259. Um, on our test, we would have the time, but this is uh, from a Facebook post. So 259 might be, if it's- And fast because the insulin suppresses cortisol. Ah, so, okay, that's good. Now, the other part of the hormone uh, section are the thyroid hormones. TSH is 2.24. It's not bad, should be kept below 2.5. Okay. Uh, free, 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 free T4, T4 is 14.7. The active form of uh, thyroxine that will convert to the active form so is that of thyroid average, hormone. The free T3 is 6.79. Okay, it's within range. So yeah. it's fine. And then, yeah, the, and then there we have the antibodies yeah, that well, reflect on Hashimoto. Yeah. So this particular, he, he didn't post his antibodies, but on our test we have the antibodies, and if they're elevated, you can have... Uh, now, elevated TSHs, it should be a reason to take some T4, but you can also take selenium because in the lack of selenium, uh, perhaps as we age, TSH is downregulated and elevated. Okay. Also on the, uh, this is the PSA, the PSA level. PSA, yes. Uh, avoid ejaculation for three days. So avoid no, riding the bike. Avoid know. squats. Huh? So avoid ejaculation about three days before. Mm. Avoid doing heavy squats, would you say? R no heavy squats, riding the bike. No heavy squats, no riding the bike. Or spinning lessons. Or, okay, so no cycling, no spinning. No, do not press the perineum. Okay. okay. All right. And of course, uh, no sign of uh, prostatitis either. Right, so if you have prostatitis, you can get elevated, a elevated PSA, which isn't necessarily uh, prostate now, cancer. Now, an elevated PSA then um, leads to digital radical examination. And after this, an MRI. And then biopsy tells the truth, of course. Okay. All right. And then in future, there may be a liquid biopsy. Yeah, but an elevated PSA yeah. uh, will give the symptoms on nicturia. Okay. Or disability to uh, initiate the urination or give you the feeling that a little bit of, uh, of urine is kept, is left in the bladder. All right. And the, the, so we talked about the antibodies. The final three are... Uh, vitamin D3. The active form, yes, that uh, absorbs the calcium, okay. Vitamin D3 should be uh, taken with breakfast in the morning. It works better with the cucadion rhythm. What about with a meal at night? No, because it may affect your uh, sleep. Really? Yeah, D3 should be kept, it should be taken in the morning. It works better with the cucadion rhythm. What if you're on thyroid medication in the morning? Yeah, okay, take first your thyroid, and yeah. after 20 minutes, take your breakfast, and after your breakfast, the D3, because it's fat soluble. You recommend 20 minutes? I, I always wait an hour to 45 hour? minutes. Hour? Yeah, I, I want to make sure I get my, my well, thyroid You can speed that in. by taking subliqually thyroid. It goes oh, straight oh, to the blood. Oh, a liquid one, yeah. okay. And then what about B12? B12 cobalamin now, it's water soluble, it doesn't uh, um, accumulate, you know, it's not toxic. Uh, I prefer to have it close to a thousand to feel energetic, is the, okay. is the vitamin of vitality of erythrocytosis, you know, and uh, it gives you stamina, it gives you endurance. You can have it either in intramuscular or oral, one milligram is enough. 
Okay, and also lowers homocysteine. This is very oh. good. That's one we don't have on it. We'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, folate, serum folate. Folate or folic acid is important to take for those that have thalassemia, low MCV, okay. elevated homocysteine, and also anemic people that want to give a kick to their stamina and uh, they, they, they feel the fatigue. They take B12, iron, and folic acid to synthesize hemoglobin. And do you recommend methylfolate or just a prescription folic acid? Uh, well, at the pharmacy we have folic acid in Greece, okay. so five milligrams a large dose. But uh, people who have elevated homocysteine over 10, they should take every day folic acid and then they lower it. Okay. And also pregnant women. Okay. I've, I've, I've always used the over-the-counter uh, methyl folate, uh, methylated mm -hmm. folate um, instead of folic acid. And I can see the, the rise on the blood test of the serum folate level. But I guess it just depends if you get it from the pharmacy or not. So that's kind of a run through of, of a blood test that completes the part three of our series on what to look for in your blood test, how to interpret it. Um, leave some comments below, let us know what your thoughts are and do subscribe to the channel. Thanks Dr. George Tudatos for being on the channel and we'll see you next time. Thanks.